Today I'll teach you how to animate a still photo from Photoshop and bring it to life in After Effects. You are now tuned into CalSoScope. The first thing that you're going to want to do is actually in Photoshop. You're going to want to name all your layers and make sure your layers aren't that complicated. Sometimes you have to rasterize if you have really big files because you don't want your After Effects lagging too much. All you got to do is save your file as a PSD. You're going to hit new project and we're going to go to a new composition. So you're going to choose the composition of your width and height from your actual project file on Photoshop so that it just matches the frame. When you have a composition, how to import your PSD, just go to file and you're going to go to import file. You're gonna import the PSD that you had saved in Photoshop. Now you're gonna be opening this in After Effects. So just double click on that. And then we're gonna keep it as composition, retain layer sizes, and we're gonna have the layer options as merge layer styles into footage. And just press okay. To save us time, I have this Jason Tatum project already rendered and everything's done on it. I'm just gonna show you guys an overview of how I got to where I got to in the intro. So you guys see over here zoomed in where you have this 3D layer, this box right here. You're gonna to wanna to make all your layers that are on the canvas. You're gonna make them all 3D layers. So what you, what you have to do is you just have to hold down on this square and just drag down all the way to the bottom. So see once I drag back up, this will bring all of the layers back and this will bring everything to a 3D layer. After you make all your layers 3D, you guys see this 3D camera that I have here. I'll go to layer, new, and you're gonna choose a camera. Now, I have enabled depth of field here, but you can actually just leave this off to make this not as confusing. And you're just gonna add a two node camera, or especially if you're just really new and you're not, you're kind of confused on the camera, just go to the preset and use the preset of 24. That always works really well. You don't even have to enable the depth of field because that can also confuse you at the beginning. And you know, I can do more tutorials in the future. But once you have your camera in there, now you see that I only have one view. You're definitely gonna wanna have two views in here, okay? so. Go from here from one view and go to two views. And now you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna change this right one. I like to have my right one have it on classic 3D, but I like to have it on the active camera. And this is the camera that is actually going to play through. So if you guys see, if I hold down space bar, it plays through as such. This one I like to have it on the top. Now you can use H, your hand tool, to move the cameras into a different place. So on a 3D camera, you have your X, Y, and Z. You guys see these coordinates right here. Your Y is bringing things up on the Y axis like a graph. Your X is right, so horizontal, your left and right. Now the Z axis is the very important part of this and what we need to understand. The Z axis brings things forward in space or backwards in space, okay? So it's like if you were walking down a road, you're either gonna be walking out to the camera or you're gonna be walking in towards a camera. Right, so that's what the Z axis truly is and it really gives depth to the scene. And if you guys look over at my top camera, so look at my top view and compare it with my active camera. So if you guys see, you guys see the Jason Tatum, This it's on this line right here. So this line that my arrow is on, this is where it is and this is where the coins would be. So you see this coins layer that plays out at the end, this coins layer is above him. Okay, so that's why when I drag and when this camera comes out, you can only see it once the camera pans out to that point. Okay, so that is why you have to change the position of your subjects and you have to change the position of your layers to get this effect. Not too, not too hard once you get the hang of it. And to change the position of your layers, what you're going to have to do is you're just going to click on your, your layer that you want to move. So say I've had this Jason Tatum mask. Now you're going to press P, okay? So you press P for your position and you're going to move this up the last the last the last coordinate is the z so you can either move this up in space or you can move this back in space so see how i'm moving this up or i'm moving it back in space okay and you can see how he goes behind the rainbow if i drag him back far enough or he goes above the rainbow because i'm actually moving him in space and you can actually see that as well on the top camera and yeah that's what it's reflected by the camera so that's why having those two camera views is very important. Another check that you can do if you're uh, confused or anything like that is using this orbit around the cursor. So you orbit around your cursor and you can see you actually do have layers that are separated from each other in space. So I advise you guys to just go in and you want to make sure that if you have like glows or anything on top, you group them together when you're moving them in space. So you see like if you click the coin glow and then I hit control, I can do that together and then open P for the position and I can move these positions simultaneously with each other so that this glow never 
takes a different path or is in a different type of space field as far as where it is in terms of the camera so that like the glow is not actually behind the coins like you always want to be on top so you would move them together and another way oh, if you're not gonna do two and you want to do more than one is just holding down shift and then you click down and that would group everything together also when you move things up in terms of the camera you're going to have to oftentimes you're gonna have to scale things down so say if I move this up right and I want it to be like in the forefront of the camera, a lot of times you're gonna have to hit S for the scale and you're gonna have to scale it back just so that you can fit everything in frame and then the camera like is gonna read it differently because it's in a different space. So make sure before you start doing any animating or anything like that, you're moving the position. So then you can actually utilize your, you know, you're gonna be utilizing your scale, you're gonna be utilizing your positions as well. And really just have common sense with it and understand where your things are going to be when your last frame is there. I do the camera motion. So to do the camera motion, all you're gonna do is, we're gonna focus only on position right now. Don't even worry about this point of interest. Not really that important. So what you're gonna wanna do is have your position set. As far as position, I would say to have your first keyframe actually on the last frame. This makes it easier for doing the animation because you know that your last frame was technically your first frame from when you actually had the picture originally. So that's where you wanna set your first frame. You wanna set your first frame on your last frame. That makes sense because we want to be finishing to the original picture. So in order to do so, what you would do is hit this position time, time key right here. So see this time key right here? That sets in the position for the frame, okay? That locks it in and that makes sure that this is going to be the position at five seconds. See like right around five seconds, that's where it's gonna be. So now since you set your first keyframe as your last, okay? So you set your first keyframe as your last there, right around that five second mark. The first keyframe that you're gonna do, it's in the actual initial part of the timeline. It's gonna automatically set once you set your position. And I didn't do anything out of the wheel or nothing uh, out of the ordinary. All I did was zoom in with the Z axis. So you guys see that Z axis moving? And that's all I did to set my first keyframe. So I set it in very zoomed. It's minus 43.6. Let's see what the ending keyframe is. It's 589.6. So you guys see right there, I didn't do anything too crazy. And the point of interest is just something that kind of moves the camera's like angle. So you don't need to worry about the point of interest. Other things that you might want to do on your project is just changing things like the opacity. So you guys see, I'm on the coins glow layer and you guys see how that coin glow just kind of appears really smoothly, really nicely. And that's just because I set the opacity. So I was doing keyframes once again. So, right, if you do set that keyframe, you hit that time clicker. You're gonna hit the time clicker for your ending where you want it to end first. So I want to end at 100% Then I go to just somewhere that's relatively not too far away and I have it at zero so it gets that nice transition. Always understand that you can move your keyframes so you can like move your keyframes wherever you really want them to be. And another thing about keyframes is when you have them you can gloss over them with the just clicking and holding down and then you can hit F9 and this makes a easy ease. So this makes a bezier that makes everything look really smooth. So you wanna use that on pretty much everything unless you really want a harsh transition, but everything you want to be very smooth. So just hit F9 for easy ease. And the last thing about keyframes is when you hit U, it expands every property of the layer as far as the keyframes and everything that you have done to the layer so far. And yeah guys, from there you really just have to have fun with it and this isn't something that you're just going to be a pro at after watching one tutorial. You just have to do it on a couple projects and then from there you're just going to get the hang of it. Thank you guys for tuning into this tutorial. I know it can be a lot getting into After Effects so if you guys want to see more tutorials and beginner steps on how to manage After Effects, let me know down below in the comment section. With that being said, make sure you guys stay scoped. Check out the Patreon where you guys can get exclusive content more tutorials and behind the scenes. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Feel free to subscribe and support the creator on Patreon.